Hey, Sammy here. I'm not your typical job counselor. I work remote and I travel the world as I kickstart careers. This is raw, real, and on the road. Welcome to the Career Kickstart Show. Hi, I'm Sammy and this is the Career Kickstart Show. And I am here with Casey Cohn and I am so so excited because one she is just a badass interior designer and color consultant and not only is she just amazing at what she does she is also going to just share how somebody breaks into interior design and how you take your love of color space and arranging and make it into a profession so Totally jazzed to have her here and having her share just the wealth of information because I know that interior design is something that so many people want to break into but they might not know how. So Casey, I've kind of scratched the surface but how about you tell us about yourself? Thank you. I, first of all, thank you for having me on here. Uh, my name is Casey Cohen and I'm the owner and founder of Room Color Schemes and I specialize in color. I have a background in design and architecture. Um, but 10 years ago, I stumbled upon um, this field just as a way of learning, and it just took off. There's such a huge need um, for color. So I started specializing in that. Um, and over that time, I also started teaching other people how to do the same thing that I was. So in a nutshell, that's kind of where I've landed at this point. Okay, awesome. I love it. So in your tra career trajectory, what would you say, like, how has your journey kind of changed from what you thought you would do? Because that's what I see a lot of times people think that they're supposed to, and we're kind of, you know, um, you know, in society, we're kind of told, like, you're 18, you figure out exactly what you're going to do until you die. And then nobody tells us poor high schoolers, P.S. You're going to pick one thing, get into a lot of student loan debt, and then probably stop doing that after five years. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. Yeah. And the best advice is just to go for an idea when you have it, because you never know, you know, what direction it's going to take you. And that's, I mean, that's how I got my start too. I was, um, in the design field and I've been in, in all different facets in the lighting realm, in, um, furniture. I've worked in commercial architecture firms, just a lot of different modalities within the field. And one day I was just like, okay, there's gotta be more to this. So I picked up the book, you know, a four hour work week by Tim Ferriss and I figured it out. I was like, okay, I know what I want to do. I want to, you know, somehow be involved in, um, renovating maybe commercial spaces or taking sort of reclaiming, um, you know, old areas and making them into nice, um, you know, urban shopping developments and things like that, but just on the renovation part. So I was working at a, a lighting um, agency at the time. And I was like, well, how am I going to do that? Well, I think I probably need to go back to school and get my master. So I really understand that because I have a psych degree. I have an interior architecture degree. I probably need to do that. But in the meantime, I was like, well, you know, one thing that I don't, I'm not really that good at, I didn't think, um, was color. Um, in the universities, they teach you about color theory, but they don't really teach you how to apply it, you know, 360 degrees in a space or what happens when you use it, you know, on the exterior. Um, so I was like, well, let me just find the nearest paint store and I'll go in and I'll help people um, pick out colors. Uh, because if I can perfect that, and that's going to make, that's going to give me an edge in my field. I can be a better designer, you know, architect, whatever it is, if I understand color, like my buildings will be really kick ass, right? <laughs> so um, it just so happened that the, the paint store I found that was nearest to me was in Washington, D.C., and it was on Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, it was called Fragers. It was an, a 90-year-old, you know, hardware store that's just beloved by its community on Capitol Hill. So I went in there and, and started a program um, there, you know, just to kind of learn myself and help other people. And it just took off. Nobody, this was about 10 years ago. Nobody knew what color consulting was. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to really uh, get into hundreds of homes over that time and, and make a name for myself. And, you know, I just thought if I'm going to do this, what I thought was a small thing at the time, I'm going to go big. And I had a big poster in the window on Pennsylvania Avenue. And I just became known as, you know, as the color guru at that point. 
Awesome. I like how, you know, one thing that I think is more and more key in 2017 in the job market is that you have to specialize. And I like that, you know, you just went there and you're like, you know what, this is going to be my thing. This is going to make me stand out and I'm going to go for it because it's true. Color can really change your mood so much. Um, for sure. I have definitely been in some educational places or some hospitals where I'm like, did you choose the most depressing colors for the wall? Are we supposed to feel worse? Because <laughs> I feel like this weird greeny, beigey, orangey color that can't decide, it's bringing me down, man. It is bringing yeah. me down. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that's the thing. I think that people realize that color affects them. They, they, you know, I don't know how, how deeply they internalize it, but they realize that. And that's why they get really paralyzed when it comes to choosing colors, because they know that either A, their house might look like a box of Skittles, or, you know, or their six-year-old picked out their colors, <laughs> uh, or they're going to come home and just hate it. And, you know, it's, it's hard for them to comprehend, but that's where I come in, because, you know, I specialize in, it's not just color, it's not just picking out color, it's understanding the individual and what affects them and knowing not not just the research that's been done on color but how it's going to affect them personally and that's kind of what differentiates me between other color consultants between other designers between other architects um, you know I took advantage of the last 10 years of being in and out of hundreds of homes on the hill and sort of used it as my science lab <laughs> it's, it's a good thing um, and what I realized is that people were having these magical experiences from what I did. And it took me a few years to realize I had this like magic. And, um, you know, I attribute it to really leaning in and feeling them, um, basically hearing what it is that they're not saying. So that way I can get them colors that are going to, um, you know, make them feel a certain way. There's colors that can make you want to eat more, you know, so you don't want those in the kitchen. Um, there's colors that, you know, can make you feel more soothed or relaxed or spa-like, things like that. So you want those in a bedroom or a meditation room. Um, but it's, it just gets much deeper with the way that I, um, you know, the methods that, that I developed. Um, so I think that's the thing. People get super paralyzed. And when they hear about a color consultant, there's not that many out there. So the field's like wide open, really. I mean, there's just such a need for it. They glom onto you. They're like, oh my God, come with me. They want to take you <laughs> out right then. And, you know, so many of my clients are what I consider 911 calls. They're calling me at the last minute. They thought they could do it. They'd just pick out their favorite colors. Their painter's coming on Monday. It's Friday or Sunday and they need help. So that's just an element that I had to build in so that I could actually be there to help them and get them, you know, same day colors so they can you know, just feel relieved. <laughs> It is very true that it is something we're picking out colors and being like, okay, I have these favorite colors, but wow, they look terrible together. And I don't know if I want them on my walls. Right. Oh, it's so cool that you really kind of like utilize your career in such an experimental sort of way. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I'm intrigued to know because, you know, usually, you know, what I always ask my guests is sort of their career tra trajectory and stuff like that. But with you, I'm so interested in just sharing with any listeners how they can break into interior design because it's something that I hear from um, clients and students that I've worked with in the past where they're interested in this field, but people don't know. They've kind of like maybe seen like, you know, where like, you know, soap operas and shows where somebody's an interior designer, but nobody knows. It's just like some glamorous woman walking around and make rearranging of pillows and then the soap opera begins again. Yeah. And it's like, how do you, how do you become that person? So yeah. Especially with the color consulting, because I know that you both, you work with both homeowners and you also mentor people who want to become cons color consultants and interior designers. So mm -hmm. when you're working with folks or you know that somebody's interested, what do you say is a really good, you know, first step or how do you even get into the industry? Could you break mm -hmm. that down for me? Absolutely. So I, the way I started out was I went to school for interior architecture. That was my second degree. I couldn't even get my master's in it because I, I didn't have enough experience to get into that program. 
So that's, you know, one way of, of doing it. However, um, the magic that I feel that's in color consulting is kind of like the backstage pass to get into the field of interior design. Because I've realized that what I do is something that designers and architects don't even know, and I've been in hundreds and hundreds of homes to experience this, that if someone starts in the color consulting field, that by understanding that they're going to be way ahead of everyone else, number one. Number two, it's a way that then they can parlay that into anything else under the roof. I mean, it can be directly designed, you know, it can be directed toward, you know, furniture, like refinishing, you know, furniture. Maybe someone's an artist and they can do murals. Maybe someone wants to work on, um, you know, window treatments or, um, or do some design work. So it's, it's a way to get in and then parlay any skills that they want. Sometimes people go into organizing. Uh, one of my more recent um, clients went into cake decorating and she, um, she does design where she goes out and you know, picks out things for people and whatnot. So what I do, I, so along with the color consulting that I did, I also mentored other women and how to do this. So I was well-versed in that and now I've taken it online to help people. And what I say is, you know, I can help you learn the skill of color consulting in the manner that I did and the way that I did. And I, you know, I was working a nine to five job and I, you know, figured out how to move over into this field. You don't have to have an interior design degree, you know, an architecture degree. You don't have to have art classes. You don't need any of that. The biggest thing that you need is a passion for design, is a passion for color. Um, you know, and the desire to want to make a difference for other people and to want to do something for yourself that you love, you know, that you can wake up every day and just love. You know, every, day, every time that I walk out of my clients' homes, you know, I just say what a rewarding career it is. I mean, I get every single time I leave, they're so happy. They're so elated. I've changed their lives, you know, for the better. They're happier. They're, you know, more clear, all of those things. So I love working with people to take them from, you know, soup to nuts, nuts, just to teach them from scratch and share with them everything that I know from color theory to um, psychology, you know, understanding the clients. And I teach some interior design elements, um, you know, and then we get into more advanced classes. And so I'm kind of the, the, the base for them to be able to get in, you know, through the back door of interior design. And, it, and then if they want to further their education, they can, or they can, you know, there's ways that we work on, um, you know, figuring out how to bring in some of those interior design elements, if that's specifically what they want to do with understanding, um, you know, fabrics and finishes and space planning and lighting, you know, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, so that's, that's the best advice that I have. Um, you can go to, um, there's color consulting classes out there um, that you can take, and those are great. And I really encourage even my students to take them so they get different perspectives. Um, but if you're new to this field and you've not done it, and you want someone in your back pocket that's going to hold your hand, that, that you, you know, your first few clients, you can go out and then come back to me and say, here's what I did, now what? You know, and I can hold your hand and take you through that so that you can go back and present your colors and feel confident with it. Um, then that's a wonderful place to start. Yeah, and you know what? The thing that I really appreciate about um, what you offer is that so many people assume that they need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars, that they need to get student loans, and just to get in and try a new career. And the thing is that you can often find folks like you who can mentor, people can find different avenues to just get clients and just kind of see if they even like it. Like I've met folks who will go through full four year programs before they even like set foot in the industry or even try it out, even volunteering. And then they actually get that first job and they're like, wow, I did not know that this is what it's going to be like. And it's like, bro, why didn't you even like, I don't know, try to like decorate your friend's house or okay. like volunteer in a place so you can see if you like it. You know, we have such a premium, um, especially in America, on 
you know, you have to have that, you know, four years, but if you already have a degree, like maybe the best thing to do is just work with somebody like you, figure out a new skill and see how you can apply it. Especially with color consulting, I could definitely see folks who are web designers, um, event planners, especially wedding planners could so use, you know, just learning more about color. That could be definitely key. Um, and now, Casey, now that you've kind of like given us a little bit of information about, you know, how you are doing, how somebody gets into the color consulting world, how they get into the interior design field, let's get a little bit personal because what I always like to ask people is what all my guests, because I am nosy, um, and I feel like it's really important for folks to see where other people made some missteps, because we always hear about the successes. We always hear about, you know, when somebody triumphed over something, but I think it always is helpful to know about somebody's big career mistake. And what would you say is one of your career mistakes? That's a really good question, because I tend not to regret things that I've done. So each step that I've taken has gotten me, you know, to where I am now. And, you know, if anything, um, you know, I didn't stay in, you know, the interior design field, like working for a traditional, you know, designer or architect for very long. And I, I you know, jumped into other fields. I would be there for a while, but I jumped in um, to other fields. So I don't really know that that's a mistake, um, you know, because it gave me other, you know, other strengths to work on. Um, you know, if there's anything like more directed toward the color consultant themselves, that might be, um, you know, everybody wants to see before and after pictures. Um, and that's something that when I started my career, I did a lot of. And then I started just doing after photos. And then I just stopped, you know, after three or four years into it, I just stopped taking, you know, after pictures. And I wish that I had them. And even today, I kind of like, I want to go back to people um, to get those because number one, it helps with, you know, with my marketing and people like to see amazing spaces. I mean, that's one of the Facebook groups that I have. That's what I, I do. I show people all these amazing spaces and everyone's like, Ooh, ah, Oh, I want that. Um, the reason people want to see, especially before and afters is they feel like, Oh, I want to see your taste. I want to see your style. I want to see how you do things. Um, and, and as much as I might, you know, feel like I should be doing that, it's also everyone is such an individual just because your neighbor, you know, used Revere Pewter in their home doesn't mean that's going to what what's going to work in yours. So I really treat everyone like an individual and you know what I do for them. It's very specific to them. So seeing someone else's space isn't going to do anything. I really pour, you know, myself into that. So, um, you know, and I try to find the good out of things. So asking me, you know, where uh, where I feel like you know I could have I made a mistake or something it's you know, I'm gonna turn it into something good so I love that because I also try to do that where it's the thing is is that even if something you know maybe it's because I can be very much optimistic but like you know start reframing figure out how it's a good thing figure out how it's a positive like make a blog post out of it or use it as like a a point in a scholarship essay or something. So I do like that perspective for sure. And I do like that bit of advice for color consultants and those sort of folks. Um, and I like that how in the beginning, it was probably something really good to like have some of those pictures just for you to like gain your own mastery, you know, for sure. But it's true. After a while, it's like, I've seen some beautiful interiors where I'm like, that's lovely. But I know for myself, like, I couldn't live like that. They're like that minimalist couch looks so cool, but I need something cozy. I need a place for my books, mm -hmm. you know, and then whenever I get like another pet again, I need like a place for like my cat and my dog to be like, I love looking at magazines with beautiful interiors, but half of them yeah. I'm like, that would drive me nuts. 
Right, <laughs> yeah. It might not, yeah, it might not even be for you. And that that's the thing. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll add one more because people often think this is that as a designer, before you even step foot into this field as a designer or color consultant, um, a lot of people think, um, you know, I like a certain style, so I don't know that I can help other people. I don't know that I have the patience to work with someone who has bad taste or, you know, who likes, um, you know, Band-Aid peach or something. Um, so that being said, I was the same way. I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. I have my own taste, you know, and, and there are designers who um, thrive on that, just their own style and taste. But as it turned out, you know, I do, I have a lot of empathy. I have a, you know, a, a background in um, design and, um, and psychology. So I've, I've actually worked in crisis center um, um, as a, I worked for a United Way crisis center um, in Indiana and I was a counselor and trainer there. So I learned a lot of skills about empathy and what I love now is really honing in on the client and what, what their needs are. I think that that's so important. And, you know, I can take that a little bit further too, to say that, um, you know, I've become a color referee between a lot of couples that are really, <laughs> and, and learning the skill of counseling in crisis is much like color consulting, except that color consulting is a visual reward, you know, that you get at the end of the day versus just, you know, a coffee pot breaking and your whole day is ruined. So. <laughs> Oh, I like that. I like how you have to mediate. <laughs> that is something that uh, I was going to ask you about, like, what is the best advice for color consultants? But I think your point about empathy could be something that would be really key for folks who are breaking into interior design is yes. that it's not just like, you know, catwalking with a beret around somebody's house and deciding how to change it all. You know, it's like more like understanding them, getting into their own psychology and figuring out what is actually going to because having everybody has had like that Pinterest of their dream home or they thought about it when they were like a little girl or something like that. And you need to like have that become a reality, but not have your own self be like in the way. Right. That's what I'm getting from you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think you're right on. Yep. Awesome. Well, you know, Casey, we are getting towards the end of the interview and I really want to give everybody a chance to know one, how to get in contact with you. And also how can they, if they watch this and they're like, Oh my God, I am jazzed. I want to do color consulting. I am interested yeah. in learning more about interior design or I think color consulting would just be a good thing to add to my toolkit as an event planner or a web developer or something like that. I mean, honestly, since I do a lot of mentoring with um, tech professionals, there's certainly a number of web developers where I really do want them to take a course with you. Because every once in a while, those guys can come up with some very interesting color schemes where I'm like, uh-huh. All right, but yeah. so <laughs> I digress. But for people who want to learn more and to work with you, take a mm -hmm. business relationship with you further, how can they do that? Let us know. Thank yeah, thank you for asking. So one place to start if you just kind of want to observe, you know, and sit back is I have um, a very active Facebook group and it's called Color Oasis Lounge. And it, it's, um, it's kind of a retreat for people that just want to go and see color and, you know, we post fabulous pictures and I talk about and teach in there, um, you know, different aspects of color and everyone just has a lot of, um, a lot of fun with that. Um, and I share with you how you can get into my classes and things there too. Um, another way for people to start out who are not in the field is that I offer a guided quick start program. Um, and that's a way that you can actually start color consulting in someone's home from day one of the class. The rest of it is me, you know, working one on one with you as you go through each of the stages because it's a little scary to step out there. But I give you the basics of what you need to know to really get started quickly. That's why I call it a quick start. <laughs> um, and it's guided by me. So you'll get, you know, all the tips and tricks that you need. Um, and then I have different classes um, that I offer. I offer classes for homeowners as well that want to DIY it themselves. Um, and that's a lot of fun because they get to learn all of the details too and they're working on their own space. 
Um, so if you want to contact me about any of those, you can email me. My email address is the letter K, the letter C, at room-color-schemes, and that schemes with an S, dot com. So KC at room-color-schemes.com. Or if you find me on Facebook, um, it's the initials KC, last name is C-O-H-N. I'm all over the place. You can Google me. You'll probably find me somehow. Um, yeah, but I, I'd love to talk with any of your listeners who think they might be interested. And if it's something that you know I can do to help them, I will. If, if there's somewhere somewhere else that I think they should go, then I'll, I'll let them know that too. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Casey. And before I let you go, and I thank you for your time, what are you launching or doing right now that might be interesting for folks? Yeah. So right now I'm launching a four week, um, the first one was called a weekend project, um, masterclass, but this instead is a four week masterclass. So it is for homeowners, but I suggest if you're interested in color consulting, get in there and learn everything that you can first. You can do it with your own space or learn some tips and tricks. Cause I've got people that have done that, that then go on to work with me, but you get four weeks and we work on four rooms where you, we put you in a private Facebook group and you get to submit your photos, any videos that you want. Um, I, I teach you, so you'll watch a, you know, a, a video on what to do, how to sample the paint colors. Um, and then I'll be like, in, again, in your back pocket <laughs> with you holding your hand, you know, every step of the way and showing you what to do. So by the end, you feel a little more confident about what you've done, um, and you can have four rooms done in four weeks that you did yourself. So that's my latest and greatest. Awesome, I love it. That'd be Thank an you. awesome thing for any color consultant, because then they figure out exactly what homeowners are having problems with. So. That's true, yeah different perspective. Great value. And Casey, thank you so much for joining me. And You're as welcome. always, I'm Sammy, your career strategist, and this is the Career Kickstart. Bye. Find something cool at cool.careerkickstartacademy.com.